And we are back with our weekly Icarus patch notes update. Uh, as usual, um, I'm going to be doing this with, uh, with Echo. Uh, I will be playing some gameplay afterwards, streaming some gameplay, but not too long this time. I think I'm that tired. But I'm going to switch to Discord and see and wait for Echo to come in. Well, hello and welcome to week 115. I'm here with Carne. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing fine, thanks. How are you doing? Uh, I'm okay, but I'm absolutely freaking exhausted. It's been such a stressful day today. Unbelievable. Well, then we can shake hands. I'm, <laughs> I don't have that much energy myself either, but hi. At least I can still do... Uh, Patch notes discussion and some gameplay afterwards. And howdy, Moshbo. Yeah. Welcome. Howdy, Moshbo. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. How are you doing? Um, yeah, I am all out of energy. Um, it's been a super hard week, super stressful week, and today has been just extra. So, extra both, extra stressful, extra heavy. Extra busy, although I did get an early finish, but it doesn't really help when you feel absolutely exhausted. <laughs> so, let's get on with this week's update. We are on to new shotgun ammo, which sounds really good. Uh, we have cold steel, miasmic, and obsidian shotgun shells. Three new Prometheus exclusive shotgun shells have been added with their own modifiers. Would you like us to uh, take us in, please, Corne? Sure. This week, week 115, brings three new types of shotgun shells to Icarus. The Cold Steel, the Miasma and the Obsidian. Exclusive to Prometheus, these pack a punch with their own freeze, poison and burn modifiers, along with some hefty damage and rare materials to craft. Batteries and Networks continues its thorough testing with our community. You can get an update on where we are up to inside. So let's hop in and let's have a read, shall we? A couple of notable improvements. Updated chairs and I assume also benches to prefer placing characters in front when getting up. This will, uh, it will place you to the right or left if there is not enough room in front of the chair instead of only trying to place to the right. I've uh, noticed this a couple of times indeed. You stand up from the bench or from the chair and you stand to the side of the, uh, of the <coughs> bench or chair instead of in front of it. So they changed it and it now primarily tries to place you in front and if there's no place there then it will put you to the side yeah so if you put your uh, coffee table too close you'll end up at the side exactly fix a collision on nearly every beam to prevent collision outside the visible mesh okay haven't had much of an issue with those but okay the Nomad mission has been fixed. They greatly reduce the wait time if the side objective is complete before the next primary objective is granted. Been a long, long time ago since I did the Nomad mission. I don't even know whether it's uh, Olympus, uh, Styx or Prometheus mission. So I can't say too much yeah, about I this mission. I don't rec I have to be honest to say I don't recognize the name. I do recognize the name, but like I said, I have no idea which mission this was. So, yeah, I can't say much about this one. Yeah. The next one, however, fix an issue with the lantern <coughs> not being able to be prepared when equipped in the light slot. Uh, I assume they are talking about the fact that if you keep your lantern in your light, shot, uh, light slot and you repair it, you cannot operate it no more. You have to take it out of the light slot and put it back in. 
that's fixed. That's good, because now you don't have to like drag your lantern from your uh, light slot to the bench or to your inventory and then repair and then drag it back in. It yeah, was, it was a tad good. annoying. Uh, once you knew what the problem was, it wasn't that much of an issue anymore. However, it was still a tad annoying. A couple of extra things you had to do. Uh, fix equalizers yeah. query when landing via dropship on an outpost. Haven't done that in ages. Yeah. Uh, I've I've almost forgotten what my outpost had in it. The apart from a, a big upside down triangle exactly. of glass. Exactly, the glass uh, upside down perimeter and the wooden bar cube. Oh yes, which I was. And I believe at some point we started to like... Storage. Uh, okay, your audio went away for a bit. Or at least on my side. Oh, oh did it? Yeah. Uh, maybe I can get some feedback from Moshpo's to whether or not the audio is good. Um, otherwise, I will have to... And there's no audio again. Otherwise, I'll have to and then I heard nothing. Oh. Uh, but anyway, your outpost, uh, we also started to uh, uh, like started to uh, completely cover the outpost to see whether or not you would still have weather events. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. Actually, were, I can we answer were... that question already uh, without having to cover the entire outpost. If a uh, room, enclosed room, is too big, it is considered not sheltered. I'm not entirely sure about how big the size is going to be. But if you make, for example, uh, a concrete, uh, say like uh, 8 by 8 by 8, it, the inside is going to be unsheltered. And most yeah, says here you're fine, so maybe the problem is on my side. Okay, um, yeah, because I remember when you built the giant wall with the, uh, you know, that we dive, mountain that castle. We dive off. Yeah. yeah, the mountain castle that we jump off of. Um, the, um, there are only parts of it that are actually sheltered. Yeah, so what I would need to do there is, and like I have the entire floor as one open space, what I have to do is put uh, walls inside. And like, yeah, uh, so you chop it up into rooms. Exactly. And then it would be yeah. sheltered. Yeah. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then would it be worth dismantling what you've built already and then we can ah. reuse the resources elsewhere? It's an outpost. Materials respawn yeah. anyway. Yeah, but so. even so. Uh, but yeah, hey, I, feel free I, to I, take it apart again. I don't care. Yeah, I, 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 I do remember that none of my benches are water or power driven yep. or, or connected to them. So it's. Uh, I believe we did put one or two water pumps in, but uh, you are right, it is like ages ago since we were in that particular outpost. Yeah, my, 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 grow, cro my, grow, my crop plots are not connected to water supply. I think the only one that's connected to a water supply was maybe the was it the glass working bench so that it would make the glass quicker so that uh, you, actually you the reinforced build. the reinforced glass the cement mixer works quicker when it's connected to water if you yeah. connect water to the uh, glass working bench it gives you the possibility to make reinforced glass and i do believe all the glass in your pyramid is reinforced glass yeah yeah i do remember anyway. that anyway back to the patch notes uh, yeah. added all missing mission sketches total of eight as available paintings with the interior decorations dlc this means I have to, have to. I can make more, uh, more paintings. In my open Good. Yeah. We love the paintings. The paintings are just superb. Yeah. A couple of very nice paintings there. And apparently we have more now, so I have to find a place where I can actually put them. Ah. Yeah. Well, 
I'll, uh, I'll do it in the subsequent gameplay. No, no, no problems there. Yep. Uh, uh, fixed many caves not having overridden spawn spawn rules for bees, causing some issues when bees and cave worms would both spawn when only one should have. Indeed, multiple caves with both worms and bees. Um, yeah, no, nasty. That's an, that sounds like a really nasty cave to go into. Uh, uh, kind of just go in slowly. And now, I thought this was by design. And uh, uh, the, when, the, when the bees uh, were introduced, I thought it was by design. Then the second week, they dialed down the amount of bees in case. Yes, there are plenty of cases without bees now. Uh, yeah. But I do indeed recall having read something at some point about a case with either bees or worms. And so far, I haven't had, I think, a cave with just bees yet. Maybe now I will. Yeah, it's, uh, look at it from the other side. It's giving you a bit of a challenge. Slightly. Slightly more challenging. Because you have to yeah. switch between uh, bow and arrow for the worms and melee for the bees. But other than that, me. Eh. Yeah, well, I, I suppose it would depend on where the beehive is spawned. As to whether or not you can do the go in, kill one uh, cave worm, run out and pull them all forward. Meh. Just, just go in slowly uh, with the bow at the ready. And as soon as uh, a worm pops up, you shoot a worm. As soon as you see a beehive, you shoot a beehive. And just be ready to switch to knife if bees start attacking you. It yeah. isn't that hard. Okay. This week we have new shotgun ammo. Do you want to tell us about that? Sure. So, three new types of shotgun ammo have been added to Icarus. These are the cold steel ones, the miasmic, and the obsidian variations. And all are exclusive to new frontiers, as they require materials are only found on Prometheus. Well, that makes sense. Exactly. Now, cold steel shotgun shells have a 20 to 25 projectile damage with a 25 frost damage addition, along with a 15% chance to inflict the freeze modifier that reduces movement speed and melee damage. Now, here's a quick question Is that 15% chance per shotgun shell? Per or pellet or per shell? 15% chance per pellet. Uh, 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 I think it is per shell. Uh, if I'm, I've been doing a bit of uh, playing around uh, with the iron backpack, my new favorite backpack, by the way. Uh, uh, okay. It has a percentage chance to give the uh, electric modifier to mm -hmm. any weapon attack, including bows. And shells. Oh. Bullets, nice. shells. So, you know, my favorite type of shotgun shell is the explosive one. Yeah. And ever so often, I also see the blue numbers pop up, like the electric modifier thingy. Yeah. Uh, so, but based on the frequency where of them popping up, like them uh, occurring, I'd say it's a shell per shell, 50% chance per shell and not per pellet otherwise it would be 90 percent per shell which is a tad high for me now hmm? otherwise it would be okay i'm not getting any audio at all from you now yeah otherwise it would be and then i heard nothing no more yeah, otherwise it would be, and I was waiting for you to finish the sentence. Uh, yeah, not sure what you were. You were talking about per shell. Okay, so uh, uh, every shell has six pellets. So mm -hmm. if it's a 15% per pellet, it would be 90% per shell. And I don't get it that often. Oh, okay. Okay. So. 
But the mm. melee damage reduction uh, is a nice one when you are being attacked by bears, for example. They do hit hard. Oh, I've they been, do. I've been doing uh, a bit of uh, enzyme geysers on my uh, Prometheus open world. And I can tell you those bears are big. In even the lower levels, like the 3040, level 3040 bears, do a lot mm -hmm. of damage. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah this is a, a nice uh, reduced movement speed and melee damage. Also, if we would get a desert in Prometheus and get the Scorpion King, this m would be a nice one to attack the Scorpion King with. Reduce movement yeah. speed. Because right now yeah. it's as fast as the player. Actually, Carl and I have been doing a bit of uh, uh, semi testing. Carl is faster than me. The Scorpion King can keep up with him. However, if he aggroes on me, he does not gain on me. So, looks like the Scorpion King uh, adjusts his speed to the speed of the player he is attacking. So, if uh -huh. you would give it a reduced movement speed, then you could actually do it solo. Like, uh, call yeah. shield and shells, so it uh, slows down, so you can uh, take some distance, Reload. turn around, shoot again, start running again, turn around, shoot again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but we have no uh, desert in Prometheus currently, and this shotgun is Prometheus only, so right now it is purely theoretical. Okay, okay. Right, the Mearsmack shotgun shells have a 20% projectile damage, so not... F Hold on. If I'm looking at the sh uh, call seal, it says 20 to 25 projectile damage, right? Look at yeah. The, look at the image below. It says 20 to 20 projectile damage. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a bit odd. Uh... I assume the text here is wrong. Cold steel shotgun shells have a 20 projectile damage. It would be more in line with the other two uh, shell types. Yeah, but they all say 20 to 20 exactly. projectile damage. So that's why I think the tooltip is correct, but the text here is actually wrong. The text in the patch notes. I think it should say 20 projectile damage. <laughs> Anyway, Miasmic Shotgun Shells, 20 projectile damage, 25 poison damage, along with a 50% chance to inflict the Miasma modifier. Miasma modifier lowers physical resistance by 25% for all afflicted. Uh, ergo, shoot it with the uh, Miasmic Shotgun Shells. If it does <laughs> get the uh, Miasma uh, uh, debuff, the Miasma modifier, then it's going to be more susceptible more f for physical uh, damage. So, like, yeah, uh, you uh, for 10 seconds, so it is short, but uh, then you can run up with a knife. I'm thinking about sandworm again, uh, desert, so again, theoretical, but still, yeah. Well, if 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 you were to hit the scorpion king with that then for 10 seconds you could actually you know like if if you shot one if you're in a team of three like you mean in a team Carl, okay yeah then you can get one person to hit it with a shotgun mm -hmm. if you get that miasma modifier then the other two could hit it with a rifle and you would do more damage correct it's physical resistance, so... I don't know, is so this... Dam is damage this is physical. Yeah, yeah um, should be for uh, for uh, all attacks, actually, then, yeah. Well, physical resistance, you know, I mean, if we have physical resistance, we take less damage from foe. Yeah, it depends on the kind of damage, slice damage, or uh, <coughs> projectile, or melee. But, again, this is purely theoretical, because eh, no desert, thus no uh, Scorpion King on uh, Prometheus. 
Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't try to use this one if you would do a solo run on Scorpion King, though. Because with those 10 seconds, it will maul you completely. <laughs> oh, yeah. It will yeah, tear yeah. you apart. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> You're dead. Yep. And then finally, we have the Obsidian Shotgun Shell. Again, 20 <laughs> projectile damage with the 25 fire damage edition. Along with the 15% chance to inflict the burn modifier. That causes minus 50% health regen. And minus 25% max health while active. Now I'm thinking like the... Uh, the uh, world boss uh, Alpha Wolf, for example, right? The one yeah. that, that runs back uh, runs back to its lair for uh, health regen. Yeah, yeah. So that one's definitely regenerating health. Other animals you're fighting, they don't regenerate health, and if they do, it's because you uh, run away too far, and then it. So and it went back, yeah, it went exactly. back into its own circle. Exactly. So this, yeah. yeah, but then again, how often would you get such uh, such an enemy that actually regenerates health for the minus 50% health regen to be actually useful? More useful would be the minus 25% max health. Yeah. Now the question is, all damage you do within those 10 seconds uh, will and then like you do a lot of damage in 10 seconds and then uh, after 10 seconds it regains its 25 percent health but will it like like scale like will you uh, in essence do more damage to your uh, to the animal whilst it has the 25 percent max health reduction or is this just a flat health reduction and then uh, it gets that same amount of health back basically uh, you hit it with this one it has 25 percent less health and then you have to kill it very quickly before the modifier runs out yeah but if you've already done it damage and it's only got half its health left then does it only lose one quarter of the remaining half of yeah. the maximum health. Yeah, I would assume minus 25% max health, that is like the flat 25% shaven off temporarily and being re added uh, when the modifier runs out. <laughs> that's what yeah, I would so assume. If, if that scales, then it does. You can do more damage when it's got more health if you lose the 25% max health yeah, so earlier I, I, on. So I assume it's going to be uh, a flat flat amount of health, like a fixed amount of health. 25% of the max health being reduced, uh, being taken off temporarily and then being re-added when the modifier runs out. Mm, yeah, okay. Could still be uh, useful, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the fact that it only it goes down to fifty percent health uh, regen helps as well. Mm, yeah. Only if you are fighting something that actually regenerates health. How often well, do we do this? <coughs> With exception to the alpha wolf, we have had, and I I can't remember even if it was a glitch, but. We have had enemies that have regened health. Yeah, but those were like bosses. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of situations where this would be useful on Prometheus. Um, the If you do the simple quests, the crazy animals, they don't regen health. I think. Yeah. Or if they do, uh, it's because you don't attack them for a very long time. They don't run back into a lair to regen health. They keep attacking you. Yeah. Well, I mean, the so, mammoth doesn't regen health. Mm, so, yeah. The jaguar I'm, doesn't regen health. 
like I said, I'm, I'm not sure how useful this 50% uh, health regen reduction is going to be. Because, huh, again, how often are you uh, attacking an animal that is regenerating health? Maybe during operations? I don't know, we haven't done all of, of them in uh, Prometheus yet. We haven't done uh, a whole lot of uh, operations yet in Prometheus, huh? So, I no. don't know. But other than that, mm, not on Prometheus. Yeah. So, yeah, nice, but I'm still going to be using the explosive shotgun shells. Anyway. Yeah. The, other, the, the first two actually um, sound like they're more useful as, than the obsidian one because... Because as you, as you well, just said, depends. not very many things in Icarus regen health. Depends. Like apart from the, the alpha wolf. The cold steel one gives 25 frost damage. Uh, you have animals in Prometheus that are resistant to frost damage, but are weak to fire damage. Now I'm thinking uh, polar bears, uh, snow, snow stalkers, those kind of things. Yeah. The same, some animals have a poison resistance, uh, swamp animals, uh, the visit. Mm -hmm. Some have fire, uh, fire resistance, uh, lava broodling, uh, the uh, stone dog, stone jaw, mm -hmm. the, the earth slug, but they're weak to other types of, of, of damage. Yeah. Uh, you will get that information in the uh, bestiary once you uh, killed enough of them. So for mm -hmm. those animals, for some of them, uh, the obsidian shotgun shell might be better than the cold seal or the miasmic one. Uh, looking from a pure uh, alpha damage point of view. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, all these three ammo types can be crafted in the machining bench at tier 3 and do require their namesake material, which can only be found in Prometheus. Hence, Prometheus uh, exclusive shotgun ammo, and you can also see the new Frontiers icon thingy in the, yes. the tooltip. Yes, which is in the top right corner yeah. of each box. Okay, um, that's a good image of an exploding shotgun shell there. So, shotgun ammo costs have been reduced this week. Along with adding the three new shotgun ammo variations, we're also making some adjustments in the shotgun shell costs to make them more accessible. The old one, uh, like it used to cost one ammo casing, five copper nails, six gunpowder and one epoxy to craft a shotgun shell and we're talking about the base shell here obviously because you need those to make the other types of shotgun shells yeah they were quite expensive actually and the uh, new price is one ammo casing two copper nails one gunpowder and one epoxy well they're That's kind of pricey until you are in an open world and you have done a fair amount of resource gathering and then like you're gonna be like me yeah, but I mean, if 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 you're a new player and you yeah. don't have <laughs> yeah. that, you know, you don't have that many blueprints. You don't have that. Many, uh, it's not uh, really the blueprints. Points, it's more the resources. Yeah, you, yeah, exactly. The resource cost. That, <laughs> the six gunpowder alone is quite expensive. Uh, um, if you make it with uh, sulfur and uh, charcoal, I believe. Yeah, charcoal and sulfur. Yeah, then you need a lot of sulfur. True. Yeah. Yeah. However, I have a character which has the talent with which you can make gunpowder with spoiled plants and charcoal. A character which has the the talent to make uh, gunpowder with uh, spoiled plants and charcoal. 
my open world base has like 15 water wheels. So I have tons and tons and tons of uh, spot plants. Actually, it's uh, the fertilizer and a charcoal. But, uh, 15 yeah. water wheels, so tons of uh, spot plants, so tons of uh, fertilizer, so tons of gunpowder. Still, uh, one gunpowder instead of six is a nice reduction. Two yeah. copper nails instead of five. Meh, you can make ten from one ingot instead of two. So, decent. But then again, yeah. <laughs> look at the amount of uh, resources, including copper I have in my open world. It's like, I don't know what to do with it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's a nice yeah. image of somebody wearing, I believe it's the hunt. For, is that the hunt for armor? Looking at the helmet might very well be. And using an explosive shotgun shell against a dummy, by the look of it. Yeah. Alrighty. Quite, quite close um, range, I would say. Yeah, I would have said that being that close wasn't good for your health, literally. Exactly. Um, I'd have been a lot further back than that. However, I wasn't the one in the image. So, could I ask you to take us through that battery piece while I go while I go for a bio break, please? Sure. So, coming soon, the batteries and networks. Now, batteries and networks is edging closer to release, and we have noted your frustrations at how long this has been in the oven. But our patience is so it is worth your while. Uh, we are frequently updating the testing branch with changes, tweaks, fixes and balances, as reported by the community. So if you want to contribute, come join us using the password, I accept there will be bugs, obviously without the quotes. Now, this branch will be buggy until it's polished and released, keep that in mind. This approach, extra branch, this approach to testing and refining, however, is much more effective in releasing a quality product than one that disrupts the entire game for everyone because it didn't get the proper quality control it deserves. And yes, I'm keeping an eye on the Discord, uh, Icarus Discord channel for this branch and there is a fair amount of polishing uh, to be done, especially uh, in the early stages. Uh, bit by bit, things are uh, being fixed and being uh, balanced. And I actually do prefer them taking a bit longer time to give us a proper product instead of a half-baked one. Now, we are cr close to release with the crashes and optimizations coming to a close. We will be focusing on balance and quality of life over the next week, so do feel free to jump in and give your feedback uh, in the appropriate channels. We do thank you for your patience and just ask you to keep it up a little longer. Now if you look at the image below, a bit of a preview of what you can uh, expect. Like here you have your energy, uh, your energy screen with uh, a supply part, like the solar panels, how many uh, you have on, how many are idle or off, solar panels especially here during the night, the total amount of uh, energy uh, they generate, wind turbines, uh, generators, water wheels, all those things. There is the demand tab, like what kind of uh, benches or uh, placeables do you have which do require power and also what's their status like um, the status can on I, yeah can i interrupt and just ask you to remind me as to how to enlarge that image on a separate screen so that the right mouse button it? open a new tab right right mouse button on the image then open a new oh, tab gee whiz now, the devices will get three states, like there is the state on, speaks for itself, it is on and active, it's actually doing something. 
There is the idle, which is on but not doing anything. Uh, your benches, the carpentry bench, the furnace, masonry bench, etc. If you're not actively crafting something, it's in an idle state. So, yes, it is switched on, but it does not use any power. And there will also be an option to turn benches completely off. So, if you turn your furnace off and you want to uh, start smelting something, you have to like turn it back on. If it's off, obviously, it also does not use any power. It will also tell you like uh, the total amount of power being used by a certain bench type. Uh, now this is a, a very small base, obviously. <laughs> only one water, uh, sorry, only one wind turbine and one uh, solar panel, and just a couple of benches. Uh, if you have a proper base, a decent sized base, this list will become very long, I can tell you already. Keep that in mind. Uh, also, storage, power storage. Battery racks, and I would say also batteries you place outside of a rack would be listed here as well. Uh, I have not read uh, much about the whole uh, st rate, state, slash rate of the battery racks. I haven't uh, tested this branch yet. Because I'm doing too much streaming and then having to switch back and forth all the time. Uh, I prefer not to have to, so. But yeah, uh, 500k power storage. Uh, sounds <coughs> decent. However, the electric water pump is using 1k. Uh, so you can only uh, run your water pump 500 time units not sure how long a time unit unit is gonna be but 500 time units from an entire battery rack keep that in mind it's a nice buffer but you might want to place a whole ton of these uh, obviously as soon as the battery uh, and network update comes out uh, I will be doing. Uh, <coughs> I will be building a ton of these battery racks. I have a nice uh, room prepared for it already, like not using. So I'm already <laughs> pre-designing it, uh, designated for uh, battery storage. And then we can do a bit of testing, like, hey, how long can my entire base run <laughs> on batteries? It's going to be interesting. Yeah. Uh, Apologies there for the um, up and down sizing of the thing. I didn't realize that my uh, tab was just quite that large. And I had to downsize it until it would fit in the screen. So, apologies. <clears throat> uh, one thing I do hope they will give us is an option to do like from this overview do a right mouse button on a device to turn it on and off otherwise if you have like i don't know uh, say 40 or 50 wind turbines one of them is switched off well wind turbines is easy to see because it's spinning or not i reckon solar panels and one of them is uh, somehow turned off can i then from the overview here say like hey this solar panel I have one turned off turn it on from the overview or do I have to like uh, check all solar panels <laughs> one by one until I find yeah. the one that's ex that is turned off yeah but we'll see anyway that about the batteries and networks next Alrighty. week we are going to get a new tier 4 shotgun. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Our All shotgun right. team Our... will carry on one more week. As next week we will release a new tier 4 shotgun. Which is yet to be named though. If you have a suggestion for what it should be called, put it in the comments of this uh, Steam page. There's no promises your name will be selected though, but the door is open for something better than we can come up with. 
And yes, Blast Simic, uh, Blast Simic Blast Face has already been suggested. <laughs> I would have suggested Boomstick. Hey, feel free to put it in the comments. Yeah. So we will we'll also yeah. be doing a slight shotgun damage balance to account for this new big brother, so look out for that too. And I think this is an image of the yet to be renamed Blasty McBlast Face shotgun. Yeah. I'm definitely gonna craft this one first thing next week. <laughs> Uh, trust me, I'll be running around with my tier 4 shotgun all the time instead of the tier 3 one. Yeah, I kind of thought you would be. I just um, hope it will use the same ammo, because I do have a fair amount of ammo uh, crafted already on my open world. And it would be a shame if I would not be able to use all those shotgun shells in the new tier 4 shotgun. Well, but, I mean, I, I kind of would have expected it to be like the tier 2, 3, and 4 benches where you are supposed to be able to get all the recipes from the previous bench in the newer one. Well, I, but it hasn't I'd say, worked out that way. I'd say compare it with the a bolt action uh, gun, bolt action rifle, tier 3, and the tier 4 hunter rifle, which use the same ammo. So uh, yeah. that's why I assume this new T4 shotgun will use the same ammo. Yeah. Hey Jake, well, there you welcome. Go. Well, welcome Jake, it's good to see you. Yes, you definitely did make it. Um, as you can see, ah, we same are ammo. Good. Thank you. approximately halfway through the notes, I would say. Um, and we're just about to plug your DLC bundles. So if you like what we're doing with Icarus and want to support our continued development, consider purchasing one of our DLCs for a few dollars. It would mean a lot to us. So we have the architecture bundle, which gives us the interior decorations patch, uh, pack. Sorry. Now including the new, uh, the eight new... Uh uh, Painting. Paintings, what were they called? Uh, poop, 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 poop. Mission sketches. That's the one. Uh, we also have the industrial industrial furniture pack, which is nice, but I do think yeah, it, it looks kind of cold, but... I know, I have, I have a brutalist there room a, with uh, blue geode lamps only. Yeah. Um, but there are many of you out there who are actually into that kind of thing, so that's your thing. Excellent. And, and next we have the Art Deco Furniture Pack, which is our favourite. I just love it. It's so opulent, and I probably oh, yeah. say that every time, but it's true. It's very fancy, with all the gold decorations and stuff. I like it. <laughs> Jake says, oh god, <laughs> it's the New Zealand spelling section. <laughs> and the irony. The irony. The spelling mistake in that comment. <laughs> well, see, seeing as you raise it, we'll, we'll, I might just highlight it, but we won't say it. Um... Next, we have the Outpost Bundle, which, if memory serves me right, it does not have Arcticus in this list, but it is an Outpost. So we have Holdfast, and we have Icehelm, Tecton, Everbark, Cactus, and I believe Arcticus. Arcticus. Yeah. So, that brings us on to the Changelog. And our new content this week is Unlocked the Shotgun Ammo, which we've spoken about above, and re reduced the price of Buckshot significantly. Yes, you have reduced the price of the shells. And I just, I like that because it means they're so much more attainable for the newer player. Uh, for the newer uh, missions slash open world slash yeah. operations. Yep. Yeah. 
All righty. So what did they fix this week, Corne? Uh, in the Shadow mission, they updated the crop plots to spawn the new version rather than the old version and being immediately replaced by the new version. Would make sense in need to like straight away spawn the new one. Yeah. Also added plants to the spawned crop plots. Again, been a long, long time ago since uh, we did the shadowed mission. Yeah, I have to be honest to say I don't actually remember. Is that the one where you've got to grow? Um, I really have like no idea. Wheat, wheat, and maybe carrots or something. I don't know. It's been so long since we played it. Good grief. Yep. I don't even remember whether it's Olympus or st or, or Six. So maybe an Icarus, uh, the first mission or so. No, it's to spawn, not to drop down. So to spawn, I have no idea. Bah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, updated chairs to prefer placing characters in front when getting up. This has been spoken about above. Uh, they'll place the characters to the left or right if there's not enough room up front instead of always trying to place to the right. Yeah. Which might actually spawn you outside the building depending on where you've put your seat. Uh, I reckon if you put it... Uh, if it's face forward against the wall, uh, it would spawn you to the left or the right of the bench and not to the front outside the base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk, talking about that, I had it earlier this week, uh, I was on my mount, put it in the in my exotic space, which is a f very small uh, base. I mm -hmm. jumped off my mount and I was standing outside. <laughs> Well, that was one of the things that right. I remember okay. experiencing quite a lot earlier on with the mounts. Not so much now, because uh, I kind of just got used to it. But the, yeah, there were there were occasions where we would spawn, you know, we would end up getting off the mount and end up outside the building. Well, it's very easy to test just a uh, parker mount right next to a wall. Because I believe if you happens. yeah if you exit the mount uh, like unmount you spawn to the left of it, so it's, it's it's rather easy to test, to reproduce. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Fix collision on nearly every beam to prevent collision outside visible mesh, also mentioned above. Yeah. Uh, Nomad greatly reduced the wait time if the side objective is complete before the next primary objective is granted, also spoken about above. Uh, fixed lantern cannot be repaired when in the light slot, also spoke about that yeah. above. Actually, it can be repaired, but then you can't use it no more. You have to drag it out of the light slot and drag it back in. This now has been fixed. Yep. Quality of life improvement. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they fixed the uh, EQS query when landing via dropship on an outpost. That was also mentioned above. Uh, added, added emission sketches, available paintings, as talked above. Yeah, and uh, many caves not having been overridden spawns for bees. Uh, causing them to spawn the same number of bees as cave worms. This means many caves will now have way less bees. Uh, I've been in big caves with uh, five, six, seven worms, but still only like two or three uh, beehives. I don't recall having been in caves with more than three beehives though. Alrighty. So, K's now have less bees. <laughs> well, true, true. I've uh, seen small K's with still with two beehives. So, anyway, we will see what it uh, was going to mean with the bees. Basically, the only reason I'm still uh, visiting K's at the moment is to see whether or not there is a purple uh, exotic node in. Anyway. Alrighty. 
Okay, so now we're on to future content. Um, small adjustments to the hammerhead slug nail. Snail. Sorry. Hammer slash snail, yep. Yeah, New Zealand speak there. <laughs> no, it says small, so little. Oh, so, okay. So maybe we get Sorry. little ones and big ones. I don't have my glasses on, that's why I'm thinking snail? it's a snail. No small. Sorry. And adding in oh, hammer slug small yeah. idle and aggro audio. So yeah. Okay. Small variant. Yeah, like I said, I don't have my glasses on. My so my bad. It's not New Zealand spelling, but it's Scottish reading. It's my yeah, it's my fault. It's my fault. It's my fault. <laughs> Gas sounds for the uh, hammer r head slug. We would only highlight it, not uh, point it out. Unique gas sounds for those. For a slug? Huh. Gas sounds? I know, right? But wow. the... They... They're not flyers. They no, but I mean, the slugs are the viscera, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so what do they do that are gas cloud like? I don't know. Maybe this hammerhead is spe uh, special? Could be. I don't know. Alrighty. Uh, adding more appropriate sound idle nay jump land stomp to woolly zebra idols. I'm looking at the next one. The Mount Woolly Zebra. When? The, uh, the, the, the uh, more fine tunes. Yeah. Balances for the Woolly Mount. Uh, Mount Woolly Zebra. Yeah, thank you. Uh, adjusting footsteps and idle anim notifiers to be more appropriate. <coughs> I'm going to ask you to take over at this point because I am. I can't even read properly. I'm so tired. Okay. Well, uh, let's see what else is uh, jumps out. Oh, the out attack of, audio uh, for same. Uh, adding carcass and set up dead items for the mini hippo. Uh, which well, was no, actually talked a while about. Since that's been mentioned. Yeah, but it has been mentioned one or tw once or twice before, I believe, the mini hippo. Yeah, yeah. More mini hippo, woolly zebra mounts. Uh, adding woolly zebra UV events. Makes sense. If it's going to be a mount, you need a juvenile. Well, yeah. <coughs> the bear height saddle icon. So more saddles. Yeah, but bear height. I hope those new saddles will give some uh, unique uh, buffs or unique stats. Yeah, like keep you a bit warmer. Yep, like a bear hide saddle, uh, keep you a bit warmer. Uh, there was talk about a race saddle at some point. I hope that will yeah. give you a bit more speed, something like that. Because if it's Possible. just, just uh, another mesh, then it's like mm, not useful. If it, however, would give some a uh, nice unique buffs, then it's going to be interesting. So then you're going to be like, okay, where am I going to go to? Which saddle am I going to use? Okay, well, maybe this will give you a clue. Added icons for Croc, Deluxe and Sandworm saddles. Yeah, I don't know. Next one. Hmm. The setup for the blue back and the red back mounts. Will this mean we can finally put a saddle on Daisy? I've had it in my open world for ages. Yeah. Uh, but no, because Daisy was an adult and when we escorted her home and the mounts come from juveniles because you've got to tame them. Yeah, but Jay Daisy is already tamed. Daisy was the pre-tamed blueback in the very first Good operation. Good point, yeah. And we were supposed to be able to, or at least according to uh, 
what was in the patch notes about Daisy and in the uh, quest uh, description about Daisy, we were supposed to be able to like write Daisy as well. So I hope, yeah, I hope Daisy will finally become use <laughs> useful. Useful. Because right now she's standing yeah. there and eating and drinking. Not sure about drinking though. Definitely eating. And yeah. doing nothing. Yeah, eating, drink, eating, drinking, sleeping, and shoveling. Uh, she ain't <laughs> even sleeping, I think. Well, actually, uh, adult moans don't sleep no more. Oh, I no, neither. Have you never noticed? You will I never see that. an adult, or at least I've never seen an adult mount on a bed, on an animal bed. Yeah, because like when you rescue the juveniles, they will eat and then they go sleep. Yeah, they will eat, they will drink, and they will sleep for the taming progress. However, I've mm, I don't recall ever having seen an adult mount sleeping. So. Yeah, well, apparently they have uh, <clears throat> unlimited stamina, so there you go. Uh, <coughs> Since cons consume tag on various seed packs, so they are not marked as food. Okay. Hammerheads, more hammer slugs. Uh, lots of updates and additions to the hammer slug of all sizes. Yeah, definitely gonna have multiple sizes of the hammer slug. Okay. Uh, the sandworm saddle, croc skin saddle is only gonna be for buffalo, moa and horse. Apparently not for woolly zebra, not for the blueback or redback. Not for the tusker. Why? Why not for the tusker? It is a current mount already. I want a Sandworm saddle on my Tuscar. <laughs> the uh, Styx exclusive mount. Uh, adding uh, a water borer. Tier 3 rain uh, re reservoir. <laughs> Only highlighting it, not mentioning it water barrel and biofuel water pump a tier 3 water pump biofuel mm. uh, uses the same way because uh, buffalo is on a tusk yeah. oh, okay okay good Phew. Uh, that that'll be because of the basic skin uh, the, the 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 oh what do you call it mesh yeah that's it thank you Uh, anyway, biofuel water pump, tier 3, I reckon. Biofuel. Water barrel? Isn't the rain reservoir basically already a water barrel? I don't know. We're gonna have no, a tier rain 3 rain, rain reservoir? <laughs> what are they gonna improve on the rain reservoir? Is it tier 3 one? It's just collecting rainwater. Maybe you can fill your... Um, tank. Uh, t t uh. Now, that, that would be the water barrel. No, but what I mean is maybe you can actually refill your water tanker without having to remove it from the slot. Mm. Oh. Well, nah, don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what you could improve on the rain as well, actually. Would you, you could put more yeah. items in it to keep water? I don't know. You know, like when you're using... Well, I was going to say when you're using the, the kitchen bench, but you can hook that up to a water supply now. Yeah. But no. for, the, for the newer player, you can make the bench and you can make lots and lots of leather yeah, water uh, skins, water. Water skins yeah. um, and keep a bunch of them in there so that you can use yeah. the tier 3 bench without having to connect the tier 3 bench to a water source 
which requires a tier four pump. Uh, true, but still, what are you gonna uh, improve on the rain reservoir? Capacity, ability to collect water. Uh, it's a, a rain reservoir. Ability to collect water, again, I would say that's what the mm. water barrel is for. Mm, yeah, okay. The water borer, for example, in the desert. Very handy if you don't have a stream. And uh, more storage. Also a precursor to some water changes. Ah, indeed, more storage. You are correct, Echo. Also a precursor to some water changes. Ah, okay. Okay, well, precursor to water changes. I reckon the same kind of changes is being done on the electricity network. Basically, uh, water providers, water borers, mm -hmm. water pumps, etc., and water consumers, the benches, and the so storage, they... water barrel, uh, reservoirs. Yeah, that would make sense. Like, so instead of having to connect your crop plots to water pump. a water pump, what? maybe you could use a water barrel and create an irrigation system instead. Yeah, I would say water pump to water barrel to <laughs> the consumers, so basically built in a buffer. And I also mm. hope, by the way, Jake, uh, <laughs> I also hope we will get a possibility for the water trust for the animals to hook up to the water so you don't have to manually fill them no more yeah back in the good. day uh, there was this uh, cheesy method of uh, if you were at ground level next to uh, a water source put a water pump yeah. next to the uh, water trough it would automatically fill the water trough at some point, uh, you, you folks fixed that, and ever since, uh, we had to like manually fill the water trust, especially if they are under a roof. But it is coming, good, good. I'm going to be ha very happy with that. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, water borer, like I said, in, uh, in, Ar in Arctic, yes. If there's no uh, open water, like everything is frozen, in the desert, uh, in a volcanic biome, very important. How do you get? I mean, sure, you can uh, put down a freezer, generate the ice, biome. smelt it, but yeah, your audio disappeared there. So uh, in the in the desert biome, in the volcanic biome, uh, the only if there's no uh, water around uh, also the, the the arctic everything is frozen except in case uh, the only way right now is uh, especially in the desert because there is no rain etc is to put down a freezer have it generate ice and then smelt the ice in a rain reservoir a uh, water borer is going to give you uh, water in those biomes yeah, it's going to be, yeah, water is going to be easier to get, especially seeing as you can't get it from rain. There's uh, no Jake rain says in the desert. Part, yeah. Parts of the reason water is coming to tier three. Good, good, good. It sounds good to me. Ah, so maybe we will get a tier three uh, water trough. Currently it's tier two, uh, made in the crafting bench. So the tier mm -hmm. 2, which you have to fill manually, and the tier 3, uh, which you uh, can hook up to the water. Can we also get a tier 4 food trough with built-in refrigeration? So the plants don't spoil there. Not the biggest uh, problem though. But interestingly mm -hmm. enough, uh, plants that spoil in a food trough do not turn into spoiled plants. They basically disappear. Oh, well, that's good. It's good as in it doesn't take up a slot. On the other hand, what, is it evaporating? But it is a completely different uh, topic. Yeah, it is. 
Uh, let's see. The next point that pops out. Yeah, it's bad inventory setup. Bug. We'll fix. Oh, so uh, it will start giving us spoiled plans in the food troughs now, Jake. That's gonna be. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, so you put new food in, you take these spoiled plans out. But what will happen if you have like the. Uh, if you like fill it up completely, all slots filled, and then the plan spoils, will it then pop out? We'll see what's uh, gonna be the case. Well, let's see. Uh, the next one uh, popping uh, popping up here is the added default maximum placement distance of 100 meters between beacons. What do you make of that? Um. Hmm. That's, that, uh, that's it's for something oh. new, says Jake. I Ooh. was actually thinking, uh, like a couple of patch notes ago, a couple of weeks ago, they were saying something about the Prometheus map expansion, the southern half, there being no map. I.e. Uh, put down beacons to find your way, and then, yes, the, this maximum placement distance could come into play. Either that, or for some kind of new mission. Yeah, well, possible. Uh, also, a couple of bullet points lower. Update trail, beacon, map size and compass distance. And, and added the new beacon tool, the field beacon items for use in Prometheus expansion mission. So yeah, uh, I'd say we get a new mission to unlock the new... Uh, part of the map there and part of that mission is you have to like put down a trail of beacons so you can find your way back that's uh, yeah that would make sense that is how i read these three bullet points gonna yeah. be interesting yeah that's gonna be good yeah <coughs> Um, and the Larkwell and the Black Wolf armor sets are gonna come. Pending yeah, recipe pending costs. Pending recipe costs, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, we like we like a lot of Lark Larkwell stuff. Oh, excuse me. I'm Larkwell sorry. is good. I'm sorry. Or at least the, yeah. the, the Larkwell backpack, the big one. I like these slots. The oh, Alan Bow, bow is oh. yeah. OP, yeah, <laughs> very bow. OP bow. Uh, talking about it slots, uh, it's very OP because they'll nerf it. I just, I love the Alan Bow. It's absolutely brilliant. Talking about my slots, go -to. you know, I uh, went up uh, from my open world uh, back to space station and came back with the uh, suit with four inventory slots. Now, if I put on my uh, planet crafted uh, armor with all the uh, pockets uh, additions and four carry modules, uh, I'm gonna have a shit ton of <laughs> inventory slots. I see. I was uh, shipping out some exotics uh, yesterday, I believe. I was uh -huh. over. I was over a thousand kilos. Wow. I had like 900 exotics in my inventory. Wow. They stack twin 20. So I had 45 stacks in my inventory next to my normal loadout. 45 slots. Good God. I know, right? It's a shit ton of uh, inventory <laughs> slots I have there. Like obviously with wow. the big backpack on, but... Uh, it's, uh, yeah. I had like 70 plus inventory slots, I believe. Like 78 or something. Good God. I know, right? It was fun. Uh, it's, wow. it's, it's a very good one if you go mining. 
that's for sure. Uh, if 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 you're going resource hunting, I would have said that would be like just the best. Yeah, like if you go mining, well, actually put on the iron backpack if you mine copper, gold, or platinum. For the rest, the LARP on my team's backpack is fine. Yeah, I I can I can see newbie players now just running into a mission carrying nothing but backpacks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the iron backpack is actually a very nice backpack. I like the uh, chance of electricity, the, the electric uh, modifier on my shotgun. Yeah. So, explosive shotgun shells with the chance of doing the electric damage as well. <laughs> it is very fun to use, I tell you that. Yeah, I don't see the Scorpion King enjoying that very much, but then... I'm only using that as an example because it's my favorite boss. <laughs> uh, my favorite boss to take on with a team. Yes. Don't do it solo. Although I have to say the sandworm is also very, uh, very nice to uh, like kill it with knife only. It is a very predictable attack. Yes. Which means it's a very good melee uh, yeah, adversary. Exactly. Exactly. Alrighty. And that, I believe, brings us to the end of tonight's patch notes. Um, I unfortunately will not be doing gameplay. I am too exhausted. I have absolutely no energy left, and I just need to go to sleep. Yep. Um, I, however, will be uh, streaming on Twitch. I'm going to try out the new uh, shotgun shells, just for fun. Shoot a couple of uh, bluebacks in the face, or redbacks. Bluebacks, probably. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to see what happens, eh? Oh, yeah, I would t I would test... Could I ask you to test that out on the stone jaw? And see how that goes? Cause stone that jaw, was... I'd say the cold steel one. Yeah. Let me know how that goes. Uh, stone jaw, wait till it lights up. I have the idea when it lights up, it's more vulnerable. And when yeah, it lights up it... and starts spewing lava, I have the idea it's more vulnerable at that point. Um, yeah, in preparation for an attack, you would have kind of thought so, would you? Yeah. So yeah, I'll shoot it in the face with the cold shell uh, shotgun. Alrighty. Alrighty. Um, in the meantime, I would like to say thank you very much to everybody who watched, anybody who lurked, and those who participated in the chat, mainly Moshbo and Jake. Uh, Moshbo gets our first medal tonight, so well, well done him, and get that man a bit uh, bigger medal board. Uh, thank you to uh, Cornet for being able to spend the time um, and uh, keeping people apprised mostly on the Discord channel and keeping an eye on that for me. Um, unfortunately, right now I am working to live, not living to work. Um, so uh, and, uh, I apologize for the gameplay and streams not coming, you know, coming from Corne primarily, because at the moment I am just unable to. So many apologies. It's good to see you here. It's good to have you uh, joining us for the update. Um, until next week, it's good night from me. And good night from her. And we will see you next time. And remember, folks, it really is a dangerous world out there, so please take care of yourselves and each other. Good night. So yeah, I'm going to take a 15 minute break. I'll be back uh, at the hour and I will be doing some uh, gameplay, testing out some of those new shells. So. I hope you uh, enjoy our uh, personal discussion. We do it every Friday, 21.30 GMT. Uh, so if you want to check back next week for the next one, you know where to be. Uh, so basically, thanks for being here. And I'll see you folks, hopefully, around. <laughs>